what is up guys this is Chito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Nusantara project version 5.8 the build date here is of 11th May 2023 this ROM comes with GApps variant and vanilla variant and as usual I have flashed the GApps included variant and you will find the flashing guide in the description box as well so first things first let me show you the about section this is how it looks we have the Nusantara logo and stuff well it has some kind of borders but I have been using the blur that's why you may not be able to see it but yeah if you just tap here it shows Nusantara project right here with the accent color whichever monet color you are using and we have the Nusantara version as 5.8 the build date is mentioned right here and the story name is present right here let me show you the maintainer is Aradhya so huge thanks to the developers of this ROM and the android version is 13 and the security patch is of latest May 5th 2023 the stock kernel is the Bullex 4.14 kernel and the SNX sheet is showing as enforcing in the system panel this is how it looks like there is no system updater as of right now but there is the gesture settings in here we have the quick loop in camera then we have the system navigation gestures in the settings of it we have the advanced or extended swipe actions and you can customize it between these many options let me go back we have the swipe to invoke assistant and stuff they should be working left edge right edge is there and we have the pill length customization but there is no pill radius customization for it and then we have the back gesture height and the back gesture haptic feedback also the animation you can turn it off if you want for the back gesture then there is the three button navigation and in here we have the hold for assistant one handed mode works perfectly fine then we have the press and hold power button action there is the disable power menu on lock screen for privacy the playback control and prevent ringing and stuff but the screenshot and stuff like the three finger screenshot gesture is present in the customization settings which i'll show you later on and in the front camera settings there is the sound disabling option for the motorized front camera let me talk about the home screen this is how it looks like and you are getting a nusantara launcher let me show you as you can see this is the nusantara launcher present by default and in the reasons it has the screenshot the lens and the clear all feature we have the ram status seeing option right here and in the reasons you can customize all of this and we have the miscellaneous settings right here you can disable the stations then inside the app drawer we have the icon labels in drawer and stuff in the home screen we have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen while we were scrolling and zooming and all the other customizations that you can see from right here and in the icons we have the icon pack changing option notification dots icon size font size etc customization these are the stock apps present by default here but the pixart and stuff and the fresh walls were downloading because i was restoring my google app data backup now in the home screen i can double tap in the like blank area and it will turn off the screen and the screen of FOD is actually working perfectly fine no issues to the left of the home screen we have the google's discover page they are working perfectly fine and swiping up will get you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular app swiping down will get you to the notification panel this is how it looks like and in the dark theme it will look like this one and yeah it definitely looks cool in the light theme the quick setting panel turns white that's a good thing but talking about the widgets this is how it looks like the android 13 kind of clock widget and stuff the animation of it is working fine i have also added the subscriber count widget but there is no battery widget i could not simply find that in the widget section but yeah normal android 13 widgets are there and they should be working you have the edit button right here then the power menu appears like this there is the advanced reboot you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here and we have the wi-fi mobile data the bluetooth toggle flashlight auto rotate battery saver google home controls night light and stuff is there and there is the screen recorder also and we do have these newer features like the record entire screen record a single app then we have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time show touches and all the other features like the hevc skip timer all these kind of new features are here for the screen recording we have the nearby share data saver dark theme hotspot and the do not disturb then we have the airplane mode one-handed mode and stuff then the heads up dreaming and the hybrid mode both are there but let me tell you there is no high refresh rate option in this particular rom so you won't get anything about 60 hertz this rom is running 60 hertz by default and you cannot really change that now if you want to go into the customizations and the settings you have to go into this nusantara wings but you can also go into it with this kind of toggle this nusantara kind of logo if you just tap here it will go into this nusantara wings so this is how the customization section looks like right now let me show you the system there are multiple different tabs like the system lock screen and stuff and i'll show you first from the system and we have the game space right here you can add any game that you are willing to then we have the theme section we have this theme style you can change it between these many options also the color source you can have it on wallpaper or notification and booth and stuff thin background and stuff is there and we have the home page style 
there is a default USB grid and grid style option then the Nusantara blur style and if I just disable this combined blur as you can see the wallpaper is more visible right now and it looks much more beautiful so yeah you can customize between these many options combined blur effect and the heads up blur and stuff is there and you can totally disable the blur if you don't want it and we have the system theme right here then we have the dark AOSP pure black or the pitch black then we have the Nusantara clear theme then the solarized theme and stuff all these options are here icon shapes are there and these are the icon shapes you can see the name and the style of it then we have the wi-fi icon styles and also here it looks so beautiful with these icon styles and we have the signal icon styles as well and you can change it between these many options plethora of options are here even the nav bar style you can change and again plethora of options are there for the three button nav bar style in the notifications we have the annoying notification make heads up less annoying Reticker and we have the blink flashlight for incoming call and the notification and stuff then we have the miscellaneous settings in here we have the android p style kind of animation ignore window secure flags wake lock blocker alarm blocker and the unlimited google photo storage unlock higher fps in games netflix spoof also there is the spoof all apps as a pixel device so this is really interesting also we have the swipe break screenshot and stuff they are working fine there is the share, edit, delete and the capture mode feature. Also there is the double tap to sleep on the status bar and lock screen both. Let's move on to the lock screen here we have the lock screen items. Here we have the height quick setting in lock screen and the temperatures into celsius or fahrenheit you can choose. And we have the lock screen charging info. Lock screen clock font is right here and you can choose between these many options. Just notice plethora of options are here. Maybe not as much as evolution x but yeah there are plethora of options for the lock screen clocks. And we have the double line clock, media cover art and stuff. We have the fingerprint preference. We have the disable ripple effect option. Then we have the fingerprint authentication and error vibration. Then we have the screen of UDFPS. That's the screen of FOD and the UDFPS haptic feedback. Then we have the icon picker and these are the icons that you will get over here. Everything just looks so beautiful over here. Just notice even the animations it's so much like well separated from the background. I've been using with this Nusantara project. Into the status bar we have the battery options. Here we have the left battery text, then the Bluetooth battery status and the battery icon style. You can choose it between these many options. I have been using with the style A landscape R and we have the battery percentage. You can have it inside or outside the icon. Then we have the battery bar right here. You can enable it if you want to. In the clock options, we have the show clock and date option and the like AM, PM and stuff. You can customize thoroughly, no issues. Next is the icon manager. We have the tuner for the status bar icon. Here we get the headset, Bluetooth, etc. kind of icons. There is also the Vaulty icon. So if you insert a Vaulty SIM card, it will appear. And we have the location privacy indicator, my camera privacy indicator, combined signal icons, colored icons, Nusantara logo. This is the logo. You can disable it if you want. And there's the style as well. You can change it. If you want to change the logo, then we have the show data disabled icon, 4G icon and stuff. In the quick settings, we have the require unlocking to use sensitive tiles. Then the quick setting panel kind of customization like the brightness slider position you can have it on bottom and stuff. Traffic indicators you can also enable, but I use a separate app for that. And the hardware, we have the buttons in here. We have the long press power button, toggle torch, volume panel, timeout. And this is how the volume panel looks. So you can uh, like change the output device from right here. And this is how it looks. So yeah. You can change the output device to the speaker or your headphones whatever you are using then we have the volume rocker width volume panel on the left side and there is the power app volume control as well in the navigations we have the navigation bar toggle and the system navigation gestures so that's all the customizations present in this rom now let's talk about the stock camera well this rom comes with the leica camera present by default that's really awesome and you can switch the lenses if you want like you can just zoom it in from here as well and there is a 0.6x lens 1x and the 2x option and stuff up to 20x you can zoom that's the digital zoom but yeah and there is the video settings and in here you will get up to 4k 60 fps shooting option on this device that's really great and there is the documents mode the pro video mode all these options are here if you want to shoot pro mode videos by controlling white balance focus shutter speed iso and that too with like 4k 60 fps preset you can definitely do that there is the focus picking and stuff all these things are MIUI specific and really like handy features I would say and even if you swipe up there is the vlog vlog pro slow motion and sticker avatars and much more other options you can notice from right here also let me show you the front camera if it's working or not and yeah it is working perfectly fine with the portrait mode and stuff with the front camera it will take really like, good quality pictures so MIUI or Leica camera is very optimized no issues and there is also the 48 megapixel mode if you want to shoot with that there is the Leica vibrant and the Leica authentic mode as well 
and these are the other options like the palm shutter and stuff is also there so yeah huge thumbs up from me because this rom comes with the leica camera present by default here now let's talk about the battery settings this is how it looks like we do get the battery temperature seeing option but sadly there is no battery charging cycle or current the design battery capacity and stuff all those things are simply missing so let me show you the battery life that i have been getting with the aku battery app i have tested it well here this is insane it is showing me as 10 hours of screen on time yes all of these numbers are actually estimated but even with that just imagine 8 to 9 hours of screen on time even would be awesome and the 10 hours of screen on time is amazing simply the screen off or the standby time it shows for me about 10 days and even the combined use it shows about 6 days so that's insane amount of numbers and even in the health section you will see my battery health is at 94% because again i have replaced the battery of the device this is not the original battery this is uh, like replaced original battery from service center so yeah i have been getting amazing battery life with this new battery and even the fast charging and stuff should be working perfectly fine here in the sound and vibration settings we have the media call ring etc volume controls these kind of tabs looks really awesome let me scroll down we have the live caption vibration haptics and the ringtone vibration pattern changing option and stuff then we have all of these dial pad tones screen locking sound charging sound etc and there is the Dirac option and in here you can enable the Mi Audio Dirac. There is the Youth Edition and stuff and the sound quality with headphone jack and Bluetooth as well was amazing for me. And even there is a Hi-Fi audio preset in case you want to use that. In the display settings we have the brightness level, adaptive or auto brightness. In the lock screen we have this face unlock kind of customization. We have the show device control, control from lock device, ambient edge lighting and stuff. And there is a screen of UDFPS that's the screen of FOD. Here we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes and we have the dark theme and you can actually schedule the dark theme. Then we have the night light even you can schedule that with the intensity changing option. We have the prevent accidental wake up and stuff and there is the pickup option as well. I have enabled that. I'll show you that if it's working. In the security settings, in the settings of it, we have the power button instantly locks. In the mode option, we have the app lock. Now let me show you how is the fingerprint scanner speed overall. Okay, so I cannot really find a always on display toggle. So I have to enable it from the display settings, I guess. So if I enable this always show time and info in the lock screen in the display settings, I hope you can see that. Yeah, the always on display looks like this. So beautiful and the clock and stuff. You can of course customize that. And let me show you even from the always on display. The fingerprint scanner speed is perfectly fine. And just look at the animation. How beautiful it looks with the Nusantara project animation. And even with this finger, yeah, it unlocks. Now let me just disable that and let's see if the pickup is working. I'll just put the device on the desk and pick it up on my hand. And as you can see, pickup gesture is actually working perfectly fine. Now it's time I'll show you the face unlock and here I'll just double tap and swipe up on the lock screen. Yeah, it pops out the front camera and as you can see, it unlocks. Let me try one more time. I'll just double tap to wake and swipe up. So yeah, face unlock is working perfectly fine. Now let me show you the app lock and in here I have locked the Telegram app and if I just try to open it and as you can see it opens and goes into wherever I left it. So this is really good. The app lock, the face unlock, the favorite scanner, everything is working perfectly here. Talking about basic things, CS, yes, it passes the safety net test right out of the box. So banking apps will not be a problem here at all. The DRM info stays as L1 here so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. Also, if you turn on that Pixel Unlimited Backup, it does support the Google Photos Unlimited Backup just like a Pixel device. So that's really good. Talking about performance, yes, I have to say this ROM runs on 60 Hz. There is no overclocking option, but even with that, I don't see a huge lag. You will get used to the 60 Hz if you are switching from like 72 Hz ROM or something like that. But yeah, I would say overall, even with 60 Hz, it's a decent experience. No issues whatsoever with even 60 Hz, I would say when the animation and stuff everything just stays smooth enough for daily driving it is a really stable experience i have to say and here are the android 10 geekbench score with a cpu stress test on this particular build of nusantara project so let me in the comments what do you guys think about this rom and i feel this nusantara project rom on the redmi k20 pro is like one of the most stable roms with a lot of customizations it comes with leica camera and stuff and all those things does make this rom an awesome deal let in the comments what do you guys think give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet share this video with your friends if you want them to know about the latest news on Tara project rom on the k20 pro and how it's running this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now